What is up amigos? Today we are looking at Bernoulli's equation. So we'll be going through what is Bernoulli's equation, assumptions that we have to use in order to use Bernoulli's equation and uses for it. So Bernoulli's equation is probably like the top five most important equations in aerodynamics and fluid mechanics in general. It's just so useful and it's actually very simple. So it's defined as P plus half rho V squared equals constant. So this is pressure, P, and in path, if we're using SI as Pascals, then we have density, so rho, then we have velocity, V. So what this means is that as if we know any two of these properties, we can calculate the third one. So if we have P1, the pressure at one station, plus half times the density at one station, times the velocity at one station equals the pressure at the second station plus half density there, velocity there as well. And it also equals at the third station. So we can have P3 plus half rho V squared three and so on as many stations as you like. So what does this mean? First of all, it means that we can, as I mentioned, if we know two of these properties, we can figure out the third one. It also means that if the pressure drops and the density stays the same, the velocity must increase. And this is a very important point that we use in so many different applications. So for example, if we have a duct, which uh, let's say it converges and then diverges, because the cross section reduces and let's say the density stays the same, the velocity must increase. And from Bernoulli's equation, we know if the velocity increases, well, the density stays the same, the pressure must decrease in order to compensate for that. So we can say it's just by knowing that the velocity increases because the cross-sectional area reduces in this duct, that the pressure must also decrease in order to counteract that. Now, what are some assumptions? The first one is that for this particular case, we have to assume that the flow is incompressible, but also how we apply this. So if we have just a general flow, let's say we have whatever, we have two different points, point one here and point two here. If they are not connected by a streamline, so there's no, let's say the streamline going through this point follows this path and the streamline from this one goes through this path, they're two different streamlines. In order for us to be able to use this relationship here, so to relate P1 to P2, we must have an irritational flow. What does that mean? It means that in this entire box, the vorticity is zero. So there's no vorticity. If there is vorticity at some point, we cannot use this equation for this situation. The only time that we can use this now is if we have two points and they are now connected by a streamline. So those are some assumptions. So uses, let's move on to that. I should also mention if any of these assumptions are not holding true, so if the flow isn't incompressible or if the flow is not um, irritation and we try to apply it to different points along different streamlines, then this equation will break down. There are other ways that we can use this equation with different assumptions, for example, if it's compressible, but this is the most basic and fundamental equation that we use throughout aerodynamics. So what are some uses? I already went through the converging diverging duct, but there are other ones, for example, the airfoil. So we all know about airfoils. And if you were to ask anyone about how an airfoil works, Usually what they'll say is that, okay, so the flow over the top has to accelerate, so then the pressure has to drop, which then we get lift. That's what they say. But why is that? Well, this comes back to Bernoulli's equation. The velocity over the surface, over the top, definitely does increase. The velocity over the bottom also increases a little bit as well, but it depends on the angle of attack. Generally what happens is that the velocity on top is it accelerates more than the velocity underneath, which means that the pressure on top has to drop more than the pressure underneath. So we have a pressure differential, which results in lift. And the only reason why the pressure drops because the velocity increases is because of Bernoulli's equation. If Bernoulli's equation didn't exist, this would not work. Also, if, velocity, if viscosity didn't exist, this also wouldn't work as well, but that's a different point. Let's not go into that. Um, let's not open that can of worms here. Let's just stick to Bernoulli's equation. So that is Bernoulli's equation in a nutshell, and it's very powerful. So let's go through it briefly again. What it means is that if you have the pressure, the density, and the velocity, if you know all these three, we know that from this equation, it has to remain constant along a streamline if the flow is rotational. So this means that the vorticity does not equal zero along the entire domain. If 
the vorticity is zero, so it's irrotational, then this equation holds true no matter where you are in the domain. So you can have different points along here and use this equation to calculate the pressure or uh, velocity or density by knowing those properties at different points. The assumptions are that the flow is incompressible for this particular case. And as I mentioned, this difference between rotational and irrotational flows. As a side note, pretty much every flow is rotational. So uh, in, real, in real life, this kind of breaks down, but that's where we have some inefficiencies, but they are usually quite minor. So we can get away with using it still to uh, quite a great extent. What about some uses? So pretty much anywhere where we have flow, where we have changes in pressure and or changes in density and uh, velocity, this equation can be used to great, great effect to inform us what is happening at different points in the flow. So we have, for example, the converging diverging nozzle, the airfoils, any other surface you'd like, that can happen. Any curved surface, we'll, we can take advantage of this too. So that's in this video. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you want to get a textbook, for example, that goes into more depth, the Bernoulli's equation and or any other fundamental aerodynamics, you can check out Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by um, John D. Anderson. It's a textbook that I really like. It's actually one that I used back when I was in university, but an earlier edition. You can find the link to that in the description below and check out our other videos on fundamental aerodynamics as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.